Hi, this is Kristen McCracken here with our keynote chats interview with Lewis Hoffman, who is featured in the Face to Face with German Films campaign, which shines a spotlight on rising stars in the German film industry. Uh, welcome, Lewis. <laughs> Hello. Thanks for inviting me. Sure. On here. Great. Um, Lewis has been acting since age 11 and has already received a number of awards for his work. Uh, his international premiere was in the Oscar-nominated film from Denmark, Land of Mine, which came out in 2015, uh, after which he starred in films with um, films like Alone in Berlin with Emma Thompson and The White Crow, which was directed by Ray Fiennes, Center of My World, Prelude, and Red Sparrow, starring Jennifer Lawrence. Um, he starred in the first German Amazon Prime series, You Are Wanted, and also the first German Netflix series, Dark, a huge international sci-fi hit. So congratulations on an amazing career so far, and you're still so young. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, but let's start with Dark, which has just come to an end with a thrilling third season, which just, was just released on June 27th, so not everyone might not have seen all of it yet. Um, without giving too much away, how much did you know about the finale when you started to shoot the season? Did the cast know where the journey was headed, or was it like a mystery for you as you kind of went on, if you went on long, went along? Well, it was um, from the showrunners, it was always planned as a three piece um, series. Uh, there was always going to be three seasons. And so they sort of knew where they wanted to go. But um, us as a cast, we I think we learned about the ending uh, halfway through the shoot of the third season. So um, we were, of course, always trying to figure it out and um, sort of squeezing um, the director and um, the other showrunner. But um, they still wanted us to, you know, sort of have a similar experience while reading it that could be similar you know to the to the experience of the audience when they yeah. watch it so they didn't want to um, give anything away too early but when we finally read it i think we were all quite excited and um fine with the ending because you know it's always a big deal how to end a series and there's always you know um you can i think you can simply you can simply only fail there's only one possibility you can only fail with ending a series because the expectations are so damn high and I think they did a great job on this one and um, I'm extremely proud of them to sort of end this very roundly I would say. The reviews have been great which is good so terrific. Um, yeah that's, that's amazing. It's and you have a there's a crazy fan base so do you hear from a lot of fans over how do you hear from people? on social media Mo yeah mostly on on, on instagram um, or now i mean the tourists are back here in berlin um if, well a few of them and um i meet them on the streets and they tell me they have seen dark and um that's one of the those few moments where it's you know it sort of gets real because be, you know when it's on social media and everything like that it's 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 kind of surreal but when they actually come up to you and talk to you about it and um, then you kind of feel it and that's that's pretty cool was dark the first project where that really happened to you on the street or have you been recognized for a while um it it, it did happen a couple of times um because of other films but with dark um that was definitely some sort of different impact mm -hmm. um which was at first quite overwhelming i would say <laughs> just to deal with it, <laughs> just to be okay with it, that you, you know, get stared at in the middle of the street. I can imagine. Um, so after three years, what have you taken away from Jonas? Is there anything that you, would you like, do you think you'd like to travel in time or has this turned you off entirely to time travel? Yeah, no, it, it did turn me off because um, there's too much, too, too much shit going on in dark. I do not want to be involved in any, anything like that. So um, I, I'd rather stay away from time traveling. But it, I must say that um, um, throughout these three and a half years, uh, from the first shooting day or the, even the first rehearsals until we finished um, the whole season, uh, the whole series uh, with season three, Jonas sort of sort of stayed with me throughout this time because I always knew after shooting one season I would have to you know get this character back out again for the next season so I I think I never fully fully closed this sort of door mm -hmm. I would say so um yeah I would say some of his character basically stayed with me throughout this time yeah 
how is it different? Because you started a number of films as well over the past 10 years. And how is it different playing a character in a three season series versus a role in a feature film? Do you, are you able to let it go quicker, obviously, like, like you just said, or? Yeah, I think so. Uh, and also, I mean, there's um, so much more time for, for development if you star in the series and that's, you know, the shoot is um, over six months. And also, um, usually, well, I felt like I prepared the character, but still throughout the shoot, I would always have the possibility to sort of still change it briefly with the experience I had with the character in the scenes. So um, it, would, it, would al it would always um, still develop itself. You know, it's not, it's not like um, set, it's not fully set beforehand, um, like in a feature film, I would say. And, um, but still you have, you know, in a series you have to understand that it's, that you're part of, of one big thing. You're more of a, a member of this product, mm -hmm. uh, which is completely fine. But I, I feel like in a, in a, in a feature film, it, it's, it's different. Yeah, but I, I like both and I, I wouldn't want to miss any, any of it. Any of it. Um, speaking of films, I just watched Land of Mine, which is so powerful and has really stuck with me. And um, what did the Academy Award nomination in 2017 mean for you personally, for your career? And, and how, just tell us a little bit about how you were cast because you're a German in a Danish film playing a German. Yeah. yeah. So um, like Dark, <laughs> Land of Mine was cast by um, Simone Bea. Mm -hmm. and Alexandra Montag, her assistant, and they are incredible. I basically owe my whole career to them. Um, they're extraordinary um, as human beings and um, as well as their work. And so they, I, th I think it was because Martin uh, Sunfleet, the director of The Land of Mine, uh, saw um, uh, The White Ribbon. Mm -hmm. And Mona and Alexandra had cast uh, The White Ribbon, so he wanted to see similar faces in his film like they had cast in, in, in The White Ribbon. So sort of, you know, off faces, gritty, weird looking people, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, so I was invited for the casting call <laughs> and um, there was a number of roles that I would be more than happy, that, that I would have been more than happy to, to play. And then, you know, I ended up playing the main part, which is amazing and um this film was i don't know one of the the best experiences of shooting i have ever had because the director is um i don't know so calm and precise and and has a very very specific vision that's, that 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 he's pursuing throughout the shoot and and um then you know you always hope for the best outcome for the film. You always hope for uh, recognition and uh, that it's, you know, that it gets shown all over the world. But when you get an Oscar nomination, that's just, that's just weird, man. Like, how does that happen? That's, that, <laughs> that was, um, I don't know, I was hardly capable of, of um, I don't know, realizing that it's, that it's, that it's actually happening. And, and I had um, the Berlin Ali, and then the week after I, uh, I flew to, uh, to LA and, I stayed there for three days and everything was extremely surreal. I couldn't even, I don't know. I, I think I'm still kind of coping with what I, what I experienced there. It was, it was weird. It was amazing. It was overwhelming. Um, did, you go course, to the, did you go to the actual Oscars? Yes. Yeah. yeah how, how many of you, how many of the cast were able to go to the Oscars? Four. Four. Yeah. Wow. Um, and I think when I flew there, I didn't. Even, I wasn't even sure about whether I would be in the ceremony or, ceremony or not. It was sort of a very spontaneous thing that I could go there. And um, but I mean, of course, when when your film is Oscar nominated, um, it does give you sort of a different, yeah, recognition and um, how do you say plat platform? Yeah, yeah platform. Yeah. Mm -hmm platform and um, so casting directors and, and also agents um, from, from English speaking countries uh, came up to me and um, so that was that was great I mean that was the first time tipping, tipping my toe into the you know English English language market even though it was in German but you know and um, yeah and I, I really wanted to I, I really wanted to continue um, well not continue I want to start yeah I want to start playing English characters and uh, eventually it did happen which I'm really grateful for 
um, like in the white crow or rat sparrow, even though it's just a really small part. But it's they're all very they were all very exciting experiences, and I'm I, I don't know I'm I'm just extremely grateful um, for where I am now. Yeah. I mean, your English is obviously fantastic, so you're. Thank you're, you. Yeah, you're <laughs> still working on it. Still working on it. <laughs> no, it's. I mean, it's hard to even tell. Um, what can you tell us about working with Ray Fines on the White Crow, which was another kind of high-profile? Yeah, film. speaking about precise directors, I mean, he is so precise, and he wouldn't. He wouldn't give up if it's not perfect. So. Um, I, I think my first shooting day, I don't know, we, we, we did it so many times because, I don't know, I, I always feel like the first day with a role, you always have to sort of get used to the character and, and um, it, was a, it was a pretty tough day, but, but there I, I sort of understood with what sort of precision and perfection Rafe works. And um, also he has an amazing understanding for for actors, of course. Right. I mean, he has been an actor for, I don't know, 30 years, 40 yeah. years, I, yeah. a very long time. And um, so it's it's just kind, kind of different to talk about the role with him because he understands so much more. And um, so I, and I adored his vision and um, no, it was, it was a really great experience. Great. Um, what are some of your favorite Kino Germany now? We we really like to promote German films in the U.S., so we want to yeah. you know, highlight German films. Can you tell us a little bit about or some of your favorite German films, maybe from recent years, or some of your favorite directors? Yeah, well, I loved Victoria. Mm -hmm. It's um, one um, the film that they made in um, well without a cut in one take, and. I don't know, it was, it was a mesmerizing experience as far as I can remember. And I think I watched it seven times, not in a row, but wow. <laughs> uh, I did watch it a couple of times. And, and I, I think Sebastian Schipper is also one of the great directors in Germany I, wanted to, I would, would really like to work with. And um, I also really like the film We Are Young, We Are Strong from uh, Bohan Kobani. Um, the steam, uh, well, what's the, what's the name? Uh, System Crasher is obviously a remarkable and, and uh, outstanding feature film. I mean, it's, the, it's her first feature. That's amazing, <laughs> right? About that. And that's just incredible. And, um, and so, so Nora Finkscheid is also uh, a director I would love to work with. Um, I really like Robert Schwentke. I really like Edward Berger. Um, so, yeah, we do have great directors, and I so and that's also the reason why I would never want to, you know, cut off the, the the German market and just, you know, simply concentrate on on English language feature films because I do not want to miss out on the great German directors and writers and um, visionary people. That I and co-stars co too, I'm sure, right? And co-stars, of course, yeah. Um, what uh, do you have? Um, who are some of your role models as an actor? Like, those are people that you watched growing up that you kind of, yeah. love your career you might like to emulate? Well, I always, I always, uh, I always loved Tom Schilling. When I grew up, I basically watched all of his films and I still love him very much. Um, I think his acting is very unique. It's um, also, I think what I'm sort of going for or what I'm aiming for is that very, nuanced sort of acting um and but then again because of course i have several actors that i like and uh, i i i used to say eddie redmayne and leonardo dicaprio those are the two mm -hmm. but i feel like the more films i watch the more i see actors act in different movies i i feel like I want to admire them all and then just think of like, you know, Philip Seymour Hoffman is great in this film and then Daniel day Lewis is, of course, amazing. But I like uh, that kind of acting in his acting. And then with Jonah Hill, I adore his um, um, comedy approach and uh, a comedic approach um, on his, with his roles. There's, there's plenty of them. Joaquin Phoenix, I mean, he's amazing. There's plenty of them. Yeah. So I always, it's, it's always great. Variety. Yeah, to see that variety yeah. of acting too and diversity of roles. 
So is yeah. there some kind of role that you'd like to play that you haven't played? Have you done a lot of comedy? Have you done? Comedy? No. None. No. Yeah. I, yeah. I wouldn't mind um, trying it out. Do you think you have it in you to be a comic actor? I don't know. I mean, um, I do make jokes when I'm, um, well, in my private life. Mm -hmm. They're not always funny, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, know. I, I mean, it's always, you know, I've, I've played so many dramatic and um, often very broken characters, so I wouldn't mind um, a fairly lighter one, you know? Yeah. Wouldn't mind at all. So now the dark has come to an end, what's, what's next for you? Um, corona is next for me. <laughs> I know, right? Everything's yeah. kind of shut down. I was, <laughs> yeah, so I was, I was supposed to shoot, um, I was supposed to shoot now, but uh, of course corona sort of canceled that one. Um, but we're, I th we're, still, we're still planning to shoot next year in, in, in January, I think. And uh, that's called The Forger. And um, it's about um, a Jewish forger in the Third Reich that forged or faked passports um, to help other Jews to flee. Mm. And um, this sounds very dramatic too, but it does have a sort of lighter approach to it, and which doesn't mean it's, it's going to be a comedy film. Right. Um, certainly that's not the case, but the, the part I'm going to play is, is way more... Well, just, yeah, yeah, lighter and, I don't know, agile and uh, outgoing, I would say. And so it's very different to the parts I, I played in the past. So I'm very much looking forward to that one. Who's the director? Uh, Maggie Piran. Okay. Great. Well, we'll look forward to that and all of your work in the future. Um, and thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you, too. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Take care. You, too.